page up. Your page down. Can I hit page up? I think so. Let's try.
computer messed up, as uh, Laura used to say. And, uh, but I don't think anything, <laughs> we'll see if there's anything in the actual structure of the service of the bolts, and I think I got that all right. But uh, when I put the bolts in together on uh, Monday, um, I thought I had everything uh, done and ready to go before I took a little Thanksgiving break, but I apparently hadn't switched out the prayer list, so I didn't notice that until I printed them off yesterday, so I, I uh, pasted the correct prayer list over the one that I printed, because uh, it was a little disconcerting. But, uh, so that's why we've got a little <laughs> funny pasted part in your bolt. Uh, Alright, do we have any uh, other announcements or updates? I just want to say thanks to everybody that helped decorate the church last weekend. It went up really quickly and then it looked nice. And if anybody has new socks, we're collecting them on the tree back here to send off later on. It's yes. Larry's birthday. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh. Well, let's see. <laughs>
beginning, there is a yearning for the one who is coming. O Emmanuel, wake us up to your coming. We gather together to expect the unexpected and imagine the unimaginable. O Emmanuel, wake us up to your coming. We wait for the day when God will recycle tanks into tractors and transform minefields into soccer fields. O Emmanuel, wake us up to your coming. We stay awake by telling stories that offer a glimmer of a future and agitate the dormant hope within us. O Emmanuel, wake us up to your coming. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of this candle whose flame brings warmth to winter and fills this place with the glow of hope. reading is from Jeremiah 33 verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety, and this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Let us read responsibly Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I have a good word from you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies cry before you. Let none who look to you be put to shame. 
Rather let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice, and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimony. The second reading today is from 1 Thessalonians 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face, see you face to face, and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Here in the second reading. Right now, right. Kids, come forward. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, uh, you know, came 
into the world as God uh, living in a human body, uh, which we know we can feel things that hurt both in our bodies and, 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 uh, and our feelings and all kinds of things that can hurt. And Jesus knew all those hurts that God didn't have to know. So God shows up loving us so much to go through all of that. That's who God is. Well, Jesus, as he's talking uh, today, he's talking about the time that, uh, that he'll be away and, and not directly with us in the same way. And that's kind of where life is now. Um, Jesus isn't walking around uh, among us. But he is talking about that, um, that God comes to us and that, uh, that in the end, we'll all be together with God. Uh, that God will come to us. So he's saying, Keep alert. But with that, it means look for the way that God does things. So the way that Jesus shows up and loves us, if, if we keep alert, it's like keeping our hearts loving other people the way that Jesus loves us. Obviously, we're not Jesus, so we won't do it as well, right? Um, but if we try to keep our hearts um, paying attention to what God is about, looking for that, then when we see things that are bad, that hurt uh, ourselves or other people, looking for what God is about and, and try to make our lives about that, then we make it about love. We remember the love that God has for us. We remember Jesus shows up for us and look to make our lives about showing up for other people with love. And that keeps us alert. That keeps us paying attention to what God is doing. Uh, so instead of just trying to block out like the sleep mask, the bad things of the world and just go to sleep and ignore it, um, it's instead to look for what God is doing, to look for love, and to look for ways that we can love others in Jesus' name. That keeps us alert, looking for what God is doing. Uh, so let's pray together. God, we thank you that you have chosen to come to us, that you will come again to us, um, that you do this because there is so many things that uh, that hurt in the world and because you just want to be with us help us to remember how, how much you love to be with us um, and to look for your ways and to uh, uh, look for how you come into the world in ways that we can come to one another with your love in jesus name amen, amen.
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I'll tell you, uh, one of the pastor's nightmares uh, is uh, to not wake up on Sunday morning. That, that somehow you would, you know, not hear the alarms and not wake up and then wake up and it's or church time and, and you're not there. Um, so we're having close to it and I have a good schedule and routine for waking up, but still just the idea of that um, is a, a thing that, that you hate to think of. But of course, you know, when it's important to you, you work and, uh, and try to make sure that you, uh, uh, that you're prepared um, and that get enough sleep, have your alarm set, everything you need to do to get up. Uh, but still have the thought of what if it happens. And more so when you've been around a while than you hope there <laughs> be grace and you can just work it out. But uh, but it's a nightmare of, of not waking up. Which also made me think of uh, an anxiety dream that I, for some reason I didn't start having to my 30s, but uh, it was about being in uh, in school, like in college or in seminary, and and, uh, and have this dream that get to the end of a term and think of this with you know my kids right now, uh, and and realize that there was a class that you were signed up for that you never went to the whole time, and just oh no, what am I going to do? <laughs> I forgot that I had this class and I just never went. Uh, well. In that case, uh, should have been important to you, you know, uh, paid money for you, signed up for it, um, but uh, somehow I've overlooked this major thing. Uh, thankfully, that was just a dream, but it never happened to me. <laughs> but uh, but sometimes when I have that dream, it feels so real uh, that uh, it really brings the anxiety. I also thought though, about staying alert, I uh, thought of the time when uh, I was in high school and uh, gathering with people and actually at my church and were preparing for an event that we were going to put on for other high school youth in a few months, but uh, people who were going to work as staff for that event were gathering and preparing and, and uh, even making gifts and crafts and learning songs and all kinds of things. Uh, and this was during the summer and, and a friend that I had known was driving into town um, and I knew that he was coming and I wanted to see him and stayed up uh, until two or three in the morning until he arrived. He could have gotten there and walked in. And, but uh, but I just I remember I was there hanging out to, when, about when I thought he'd arrive based on when he left and, and, uh, and waiting in the parking lot for him to come. Because uh, I just I knew he was coming and wanted to greet him when he arrived, caring about. Uh, this person that I cared about was coming. The scripture in today's gospel is not about making a prediction about the end of the world or about exactly how that you'll know that Christ is returning. I think part of the key is, oh, you'll know. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, and, and there are always things, as we've talked, otherwise we've talked about apocalyptic things, always things that are scary in the world and, and the fact that there may be uh, more scary things is, is kind of par for the course, but God comes in the middle of that. But I think the deeper point, when Jesus talks about keeping alert, don't let your hearts um, go astray, is about that <laughs> keeping awake and looking for Jesus' return is about the condition of the heart. What What is going on uh, with your heart? That's what keeping spiritually awake is. It's about wanting our hearts to be in the same place as God's heart so that we can see and recognize what God is doing um, so that we're on the same page and already looking for that. The idea is to focus our, our minds and our hearts and our lives on God's ways so that we have hope 
through the hard things, through the hard times, because we, we're paying attention to what God is about, we're paying attention to the love that God has, so even when we're going through the hard things and the scary things, um, we are focused on God's love and God's hope, uh, so we can have hope, and so that we can share hope, even, I mean, especially when things are bad and scary and destructive all around us. And I have an analogy of, of how uh, that keeping alert and, and focus can work in our lives. Because, um, some of you may have been through a time of malaise or depression. It happens. This happened to me in a mild form, but uh, a time where it's hard to find anything that you want to do, hard to get up and get going, hard to move yourself to do anything. Um, and this can come from outside things um, or from things just getting off uh, in your body. Um, so I'm not saying that when that happens, uh, like this next part, I'm not saying that when this happens that it's, it's our fault or that we can just power through it by force of will that that shouldn't ever happen. It happens. Um, sometimes you can't power through and need help. But one strategy for dealing with that, especially if you get help, somebody helps walk you through this and how to do it, um, is to find positive things to focus on, things that you believe in, things you know you believe in, even if you're having a hard time um, getting your mind focused. And work. And it is work, and you may need help to do this, but work to keep those things in the front of your mind. Um, and this is a part of what's called cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, but the idea is to consciously decide and practice thinking things and saying things that challenge and change your way of thinking towards the positive, and towards the hope, and towards the things that you care about. And just by repeating and keeping those things in mind, that it can help uh, to draw us back towards the purpose and the hope and the things that we care about in life. So I think that's an analogy for also how keeping spiritually awake is, is consciously choosing to stay focused on things that challenge and change our ways of thinking about the world, our ways of thinking about what life is about, our ways of thinking about what matters, about the nature of reality, because there's so much of reality that can just bring us into that depression about the world and about life and about things that are going on. And if that's the only vision that we have is seeing, um, you know, yeah, sometimes people are good to each other and many times they're not. And we see that in the world over and over. It can drag us down and dissipate us and make us think, well, what really matters? Uh, does anything matter? And we see that happens in the world. But to keep spiritually awake is to want our hearts and lives to be about what Jesus is about. To recognize that, that Jesus does have a purpose, <coughs> uh, a life-giving purpose for the world, a hope, a restoration, a redemption, to make things new, to make things better. And, uh, and even if we can't see that uh, in our own lives or in the world, to trust that, that God is bringing that because God has already come into the world. If I expect Jesus' reign to come, that I should set my heart on Jesus' love for the world and live accordingly. And sometimes that keeping spiritually awake is work. <laughs> it is telling ourselves and, and coming and, and listening to words of hope and sharing words of hope with one another and, and uh, spiritual practices, praying and, and reading scripture and, and practicing hope um, even when it's work. Um, but it sets our hearts on the right things rather than just becoming cynical and, and breaking down and thinking nothing is worthwhile. So it can help us, like if I believe that Jesus is coming back, then it brings the question to me, should I set my heart on judgment or on mercy? Which one is Jesus' way? Which one is keeping spiritually waiting? If I believe that Jesus is coming back, should I set my heart on on just winning, domination, getting my way? Or should I set my heart on what is good for others? Which one is the way of Jesus? Which one is keeping spiritually awake? It makes a difference in my life 
based on what my heart is set on. Uh, is it set on just uh, just the way that everything is in the world, just the way that it goes, just get yourself ahead um, and go with the flow? Or is it set on God's plan for restoration and redemption and justice and mercy and wholeness and hope and peace? What do I believe the future is about? What do I believe God is about? What do I believe God is doing and going to do? Even if I have a hard time seeing it. What do I set my heart on? It's understood that there are bad and destructive forces in the world all the time. The question is, are we going to live with hope? Are we looking for something beyond destruction and fear? Are we looking for what God is doing? Keep awake is to live like you expect God to come and reign in justice and love, and you want to already be a part of that. Uh, you want to know what it's like when he comes. You want to know what you're looking for. You want to be uh, trying to experience some of that now as much as possible. It's to live like something matters. It's to live like God's love matters. It's to live like Christ has died and has risen. To live like Christ will come again. To live like the love of God is the ultimate power in the universe, stronger than sin or death or anything that destroys. Jesus has today the image of a tree. And we can think about in, uh, in a time you know, of, of winter time, that uh, it could be hard to tell if, if you just looked at a tree uh, and its branches. Is it is it dead or alive? And uh, through the winter, you may not be able to be sure, apart from cutting into it or breaking it, in which case you're going to hurt it. Uh, but you don't see the leaves, it's just there. Is it dormant uh, or is it dying? Um, well, you may not be able to know, but just because the tree loses its leaves, you don't assume that it's dead and you're just going to cut it up for firewood. Um, it's, uh, it loses its leaves, it's, it's dormant. It's loose time that you can't know, but uh, you act as if it will bloom and grow the next year. If it doesn't, then it's dead and you can cut it up for firewood. But during that dormant time, you wait and you see, uh, will it bloom? Will there be buds and leaves? You live with that hope that the renewal, that the new life is coming, and you look for it to come. If you have a tree that you're particularly worried about, you could say, well, weather's warming up. Will there be buds? Will there be leaves? You're looking for it with hope, with expectation that it will bud out, that it will bring leaves. Jesus says, stay spiritually alert. We set our minds on being people of love and hope, trusting that Jesus is returning to bring goodness and justice to the world. And to do that, to have that trust, is not just to say, I believe it, but it's to, uh, to act as people believe that goodness and justice are important. To set our hearts on it, to set our lives on that. What you care about is what you believe. What you believe is what you care about. So we pray, come Lord Jesus. And until you come, help us to stay awake. Help us set our hearts on your way of love, strive for justice and peace and mercy in your name, knowing how great your love is for each one of us and for all of us. In the name of Jesus, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten.
Almighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace.